Hi friends, and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Eric Sun, and I'm an incoming first year medical student at McMaster University. Today, I'll be giving you part one of how I created a study schedule, how I studied for the MCAT, what I did on test day, and how I stayed in the right mindset to succeed. Before you watch this video, I'd really recommend you watch the video about the comprehensive list of resources that I used, because I'll be referring to a lot of those resources in this video. Make sure to like and subscribe if anything this video helped you at all. Enjoy. Before you watch any further, I want you to stop and think about your goal score and what you're going to need to do to achieve that goal score. Seriously, pause the video for 10 seconds and think about that. Okay, are you back? Now, I want you to write down everything you think you need to do in order to achieve that score. Also, I want you to write down three things that you're going to be really looking forward to once you're done the MCAT and you're one day a doctor. I'll tell you why this was important really soon. We all know that the more we study, the better we tend to do on any test, and the MCAT is no different. But just like a lot of other tests, a lot of us struggle with procrastination. Sometimes you're really tired, sometimes you get distracted by things around you, sometimes you're just bored and frustrated with how long and how hard you have to study for. Whenever you're feeling any of these emotions, find that message that you just wrote to yourself. Look at all of the things you wanted to do to achieve that goal score and look at the three things you wrote down that will make you really happy one day when you're a doctor and long done the MCAT. Remind yourself why you're doing what you're doing. Remind yourself why you're staying in to study while your friends might be going out without you. Remind yourself that you're taking the time to invest in yourself. No matter how much it doesn't feel like it at the time, you're on the right track and you're exactly where you should be. Your studying will pay off. And the satisfaction you get when you see that your hard work has led to the score that you've been dreaming of, you'll know that it was worth it. Think of it as a nine to five job. Sure, it's hard and you'll get tired, but when that sweet paycheck comes around, you'll know that it was all worth it. If you look at my study schedule, which I've included in the description, You'll see that I only did content review for one month instead of multiple months like some people. That worked really well because I like to do practice problems to see what I don't really know. That way I can hone in on my weaknesses and selectively study those areas to improve my test taking. I think content review was a great way to make sure I had a general understanding of everything without memorizing every single excruciating detail. I would highly recommend that you don't try to memorize everything. There's a lot of material and it can get overwhelming really quickly, especially when you're just reading a book. When you're reading, you're passively absorbing everything and you don't know what is going to stick and what your weaknesses are going to be from just reading that book. You have to do the practice questions to make sure that you understand everything. By doing more and more practice, you're regularly going over your weaknesses and improving them. I recommend you spend as little time as possible on content review especially if you already have a baseline understanding of all the subjects. That way you can use this extra time towards more practice. And the more practice you do, the better you'll perform on the actual test day. So before I run down my schedule, I've broken it up into three months. The first month is all content review. The second month is a lot of practice questions I did from third party resources. And the third month was a lot of the material from the AAMC. And then I talk about the last week, what I did to relax and review to make sure that I was in the right state to be well rested and energized for test day. So now I'll walk you through my study schedule, starting with month one of content review. If we take a look at my content review schedule, you can see that I focused on reading a few chapters a day. The first day, I only read over four chapters of chemistry and organic chemistry, which if you have the Kaplan books are fairly short. During my content review, I didn't really take any detailed notes or do anything that took a lot of time, but I would make sure that I understood everything and come back to it in the future if I was struggling with it. If I felt confident about the subject, I would just read it over briefly and then move on. The next day, I would check my understanding and follow the reading with some practice questions from the same topic on Khan Academy. Also make sure to use any notes that you've already made for any courses. Having something that's easily digestible to you will be invaluable in understanding it better. I'd studied a lot of this material previously during my first and second year of university, so I had a lot of extra time that I dedicated towards studying for CARS. I think the most important thing that I got out of content review wasn't actually any of the content per se, but rather 
readjusting and being focused and studying for long periods of time. By the end of the content review period, my stamina was way better. After three weeks, I was reading a lot longer and I could stay focused and felt more energized than I did when I first started. That proved to me that starting off slow and then working my way up towards progressively harder tasks was the right choice. This became incredibly important when I started doing practice questions and practice tests. Okay, so now we're in month two of our study plan and we'll be moving on to starting practice questions and practice tests. My typical week was like this. On Wednesday, I would take a practice test from the next step and then only focus on that test for that day. Then the next day, I would focus on reviewing that test. I would take all of Thursday to sit down and review all the questions that I was either unsure about or that I gone wrong. And then Monday, Tuesday, and Friday, I would do two blocks of questions from UWorld. So I would sit down and do 59 questions at a time and then have a short break, do another 59 questions, and then review those questions, again, the ones that I got wrong or I was unsure of later that night. Note that I didn't use any weekends to study, but if you feel more comfortable doing that, then certainly do what you prefer. While I was reviewing my tests or practice questions, I would keep a log of the questions I got wrong and exactly why I got them wrong. Did I not understand the material? Did I misread the question? Or did I simply miss something due to carelessness? Either way, that helped me hone in on my weaknesses. I saw that for some subjects, I needed to review the content a little bit more. But then for others, I actually needed to focus on my test taking strategy. Later on, this log of all the mistakes you make will be a great way to review all the difficult concepts in the week leading up to the exam. It's basically a summary of what you're bad at. And then when you can focus on that, you can really hone in on improving your score to be as high as it can be. I started in practice two months before my actual test day. And that was great because it gave me a lot of time to understand what kind of questions come up the most, better understand my strengths and weaknesses, and also develop stamina towards staying mentally focused the entire time. I would caution you not to try to do a practice test and review that same test on the same day. Because the MCAT is such a long test, you're gonna be exhausted after that, and you won't be able to get as much out of it from the review as you would if you just got a good night's sleep beforehand. The review is where you can see what went wrong and what you didn't understand. In a lot of ways, it's actually more important than writing the test because you understand what you're not good at. Review three types of questions. The ones you got wrong, the ones you were really unsure about, as well as the ones you got correct but you didn't really know why you got them correct, or if you just guessed them correct by accident. The third-party tests are great for building that stamina and getting used to writing for a long period of time, but they're actually a lot harder than the real thing. When I was doing the next steps ones, I think I was actually scoring 10 points lower than the AAMC ones. So don't be scared if you're not hitting your goal score on these. I would highly recommend doing the four tests by next steps before doing the four tests offered by AAMC. Okay, so now we're on to month three, the last month of our three month study plan. And we've already finished content review, finished UWorld questions, as well as the practice tests from Next Steps. Additionally, I would also do some practice passages every single day from the hyper learning book of the Princeton Review. That book was the absolute best cars practice and is something that I really recommend to anyone looking to improve that section specifically. In terms of the practice tests, I would still do them every Wednesday and then take all of Thursday to review them in depth. Mondays, I'd work on part of the section bank for a subject, and then I'd take Tuesday to review that just like a practice test. Then Friday was for working on any of the easier question packs or anything that I was falling behind on during the week. What I wanna stress with the AAMC materials is that going through it multiple times may actually be beneficial. I actually thought that the second time I went through it, the materials in the section banks and question packs were a lot more clear than the first time around. The only exception to that was the CARS question packs. The first time around was really difficult and I struggled a lot with it, but the second time I actually remembered a lot of the questions because of the wording. So repeating the section banks and question packs for the sciences and psychology was great, but not so beneficial for CARS. But regardless of how many times you do it, the AAMC material is really the most valuable to your success. So I would really recommend that you don't try to rush through it to try to just do it many times. In fact, don't rush through any of your studying. You'll just be doing yourself a disservice down the road. If the question's hard or if you're feeling tired and wanna stop, just imagine that same question is on your real test. You shouldn't get used to giving up. So try your best and stick to your strategy. 
If you're still struggling with the question, a lot of the AAMC questions have been asked and answered thoroughly on the MCAT subreddit online. Remember that when you look at these explanations, you're looking to understand the overarching concept, not the specific question. By better understanding the concept, you can apply that understanding to multiple different questions instead of just getting one question right that may not ever appear again. Okay, so now we're in the last week of our study period and it is crunch time. I had four things left to do in my last week. I had one more practice test to do and review. I wanted to look over all of the mistakes that I made during my study. I wanted to look at the Kaplan quick sheets to summarize all of the material once again. And I wanted to read the 100 page document to summarize all of the sociology and psychology section. You should aim to write your last practice test at least four days before your actual test. So you have plenty of time to review it and then slowly relax and unwind to make sure you're energized for your actual test day. In the last few days, make sure you're not doing anything too intensive. That last minute studying is not gonna be as beneficial as all the studying you've been doing for the past few months. Most importantly, you should not do any practice tests up to three days before your real exam. These days, you should be doing some light studying and you should be relaxing and focusing on getting a good night's sleep. In fact, the day before, I'd recommend that you do nothing involving any studying and you just take the time for yourself to relax. The one thing I would recommend is familiarizing yourself with the route to the test center, as you don't need that kind of extra stress getting lost or getting stuck in traffic on the day of. On the day before your test, try your very best to get as much sleep as possible. The MCAT isn't testing rote memorization, it's testing critical thinking, and you need to be well rested to be able to perform at your best. I know it will be hard, but try your very best to relax, do something you love, and get a good night's sleep. Then, on test day, go out there and crush it. Now we're done all our studying and it's test day. And you're nervous, you're scared, and you're worrying. Trust me, I went through the exact same thing. But you have to trust yourself, trust all the studying that you did, and trust that you'll do well today. The biggest problem is a lack of confidence and losing faith in all of the hard work that you did. You'll start feeling really nervous and you'll start to second guess yourself. Honestly, most of my test, I had no idea if something was right, but I didn't let that get to me. I took a break and evaluated what I did know to try at least to make an educated guess to choose an answer that was most likely to be correct. I knew that I was gonna be nervous and I knew that I was gonna be stressed going in, but I stuck with my strategy and believed that I was making a right choice. You don't need all of the knowledge, but you need the confidence to be able to trust your reasoning and trust in your own judgment. I thought of it as just another practice test. The more you tell yourself that you'll succeed and that you'll do well, the more you'll believe it. Then after you're done, just forget it. I know you're going to be thinking about that one question that you didn't understand or the whole section that you think you bombed, but that's not going to help. Try to relax and take your mind completely off of it. After my test was over, I went to a board game cafe with a few of my friends from high school and we had a great time. We laughed the night away. I completely forgot that I had actually written the MCAT that day. Find something you love to do, and that will really help you with that month long wait until you see that score. Most importantly, be proud of yourself. The MCAT is a lot of work, and not a lot of people can say that they've sat down and wrote a test for a whole day. So good job, you did great. You deserve a break now. So those are some tips and tricks for my study schedule, how I studied for content review and practice questions, what I did on test day, and my mindset going into studying and the test. I hope that you take something really meaningful out of this video and that it helps you in some way. Remember that this was just part one of this type of video and I'll be making another one with a lot more tips coming very soon. It's wonderful to have you here. I had a lot of advice from my friends in medical school when I was applying and when I was writing the MCAT, so I'm really excited to pay that forward to you. That being said, comment with any great ideas you have for videos or how this video helped you. Thanks for watching and stay subscribed to stay tuned. That's been your daily dose of Medi Sun, and I'll see you in the next video.